Sup, Chooms, how y'all living? Hope everything is Nova and you're all having a preem week. So, most of my hair-related content on this channel pertains to hair loss, but obviously, there are other hair-related concerns people have besides just stopping hair loss. Probably the second biggest concern after hair loss is how to stop gray hair. Now, I don't think stopping gray hair is nearly as important as stopping hair loss. Gray hair, it just makes you look older, but it doesn't dramatically change your appearance the way hair loss does. If I were to ever go gray, I'd probably just tell people it was because of my Witcher mutations, so no big deal, or maybe I could just dye my hair if I really wanted to. Nevertheless, maintaining our hair's youthful color is a very pressing concern for many people, not to mention a very lucrative industry with many scams, so this is definitely a subject that is worth covering. It isn't the first time I've covered this. I did another video over a year ago where I covered the state of the art in treating gray hair, but things have changed since then because there is new scientific data that lays the groundwork for a potential breakthrough in treating gray hair. So, an article was published in the science journal Nature in April of this year that caused a lot of excitement in the press. Even the magazine Popular Mechanics had an article on it. All the headlines imply that there was a new discovery that showed that gray hair might be reversible. If this is true, then it is a really big deal and some people are about to get very, very rich. Here at the Hair Cafe Institute of Hair Loss Research located at the Witcher Fortress of Kaer Morhen, we like to go beyond the headlines and figure out what the research really shows. So let's go balls deep into this new article on gray hair. Is this a real breakthrough or is this just more broccoli? Well, let's go ahead and do a little background, though, on the science of gray hair before we continue. The reason our hair has color is the same reason our skin has color. It's because of melanin in the hair. Melanin is a dark pigment created by the cells called melanocytes. In the past, the theory for why we develop gray hair is that these melanocytes only last for a few hair cycles, and then they wear out and stop producing melanin. Hair without melanin is gray or even white in color. Well, here's the article that has upended this theory. Like most articles that appear in the journal Nature, it is a very dense and difficult article filled with a lot of scientific jargon. However, it is not necessary to go through every single detail of the article's methodology to understand what these investigators did. What the investigators were interested in primarily is what are known as melanocyte stem cells. I think most people understand that stem cells are unspecialized cells in the body that are capable of forming into specialized cells, such as blood cells or muscle cells or nerve cells or in cells. Stem cells have the ability to divide an unlimited number of times, which isn't true of other cells in the body that have a limited ability to reproduce themselves. Normally, stem cells can only do two things. They can either reproduce themselves or they can convert into more specialized cells, which is called differentiation. So the function of stem cells is to replenish the aging cells in the body. As you might imagine, stem cells are important for hair growth too. Let's look at the end of the hair growth cycle, which is called the telogen resting phase. This is the phase where the hair has stopped growing and the hair follicle has shrunken and become inactive. Usually within three months, this hair will shed and then a new antigen growth phase will begin. During the telogen resting phase at the bottom of the hair follicle, there is a small area of cells called the hair germ. This is one of the areas of the hair follicle that harbors the hair follicle stem cells. When the antigen phase begins, these hair follicle stem cells differentiate into the hair follicle cells, and these hair follicle cells produce the keratin that causes our hair to grow. So mixed in with these hair follicle stem cells are also melanocyte stem cells that differentiate into melanocytes that produce melanin that gives our hair color. But as the Nature article points out, for some unknown reason, the melanocyte stem cells fail earlier than other stem cell systems, resulting in gray hair. Well, the investigators in this study set out to discover what exactly was going on with these melanocyte stem cells. They used pretty amazing technology to track these cells down. Now, this is a mouse study, but this is still a pretty incredible study nevertheless. The investigators were actually able to track what was going on with individual melanocyte stem cells in living mice during the hair cycle. To do this, they were able to breed mice with an altered genome that produced fluorescent marker proteins that allowed them to see these stem cells in living mice using 3D imaging. These these mice are called reporter mice, and I have to say, it's pretty miraculous that this is even possible at all. 
Anyways, the researchers found that most of the melanocyte stem cells were located in the hair germ area during the telogen resting phase, as you can see in this figure here. The blue area shows the melanocyte stem cells concentrated in the HG or hair germ area of the follicle. So they were able to image the same hair follicle every one to four days to see what was happening to these hair melanocyte stem cells during the hair cycle. Well, the first surprising thing they found was the melanocyte stem cells actually took off and migrated upward during the hair cycle. They went from the hair germ area to the area known as the bulge area and the outer root sheath. This image here shows this migration. The orange dot are the melanocyte stem cells that start out at the bottom of the hair follicle. They then migrate to the top of the hair follicle during the antigen growth phase. They then migrate back to the bottom of the hair follicle in the next telogen resting phase. Well, even weirder, during the antigen growth phase, the melanocyte stem cells change their form. Most stem cells are just oval featureless cells. Melanocyte stem cells start out that way too, but during the early antigen phase, they actually change shape and grow little tentacles called dendrites. These dendrites persist while the cells move up to the bulge and outer root sheath of the hair follicle, then they disappear again. So do these dendrites help the cells move like little feet? I don't know and the investigators don't speculate about that, but it's still interesting nevertheless. The next surprise that the investigators found was that unlike any other known stem cells, melanocyte stem cells can reverse the process of differentiation. That means that they can change from a stem cell to a melanocyte and then change from a melanocyte back to a stem cell again. So the life cycle of a melanocyte stem cell is something like this. During early antigen, the stem cells are mostly located in the hair germ area, but they grow dendrites and migrate to the bulge and outer root sheath of the hair follicles where they convert to melanocytes and produce melanin. By late in the antigen phase, the melanocytes convert back to stem cells and migrate back to the hair germ area where they hang out during the telogen phase. Then the whole process repeats with each hair cycle. The investigators looked at what was regulating all of this, and it turns out it was the WNT wind pathway. I've talked about this pathway many times before, and this is because the trash hormone DHT down regulates the pathway, which leads to the shortening of the antigen growth phase. This is one of the mechanisms of androgenic alopecia. It is a downstream effect of DHT, which results in the destruction of the hair follicle. As such, some companies like Kintor, who are most famous for developing GT20029 in pyrolutamide, are also working on treatments like KY19382, which is a wind pathway simulator. I'll link some videos on these treatments below if you are interested in learning more about this specific pathway. But anyways, the wind pathway is activated in the hair germ region at the beginning of the antigen phase, and this stimulates hair growth, but it also stimulates the melanocyte stem cells to migrate and differentiate into actual pigment-producing melanocytes. However, once they have migrated upwards, they reach an area where the wind pathway is suppressed. This causes them to revert back to their stem cell state. In order to complete the cycle, they then need to migrate back to the hair germ region again so that they can differentiate again into melanocytes during the next hair cycle when they are stimulated by the wind proteins. Well, here's where things get very interesting, Jooms. The investigators noticed that some of the stem cells would get stuck in the hair bulge area and not return to their home base, meaning the hair germ area. You can see that here where some of the orange spots, which are the melanocyte stem cells, are still in the hair bulge area during the telogen phase. Those stem cells are stuck in an area with low wind activation, so they can't differentiate into melanocytes anymore, and also they can't produce pigment anymore. The melanocyte stem cells have got to return to the hair germ area at the bottom of the hair follicle to be reactivated for the next hair cycle. The investigators then did a clever thing. They artificially induced aging of the hair follicles in these mice by plucking out hair prematurely, thus causing new hair cycles repeatedly. What they found by doing this is that the mice developed gray hair, but the reason they developed gray hair was that more and more of the melanocyte stem cells were getting stuck in the hair bulge and not returning to the hair germ area. You can see that in this figure here. At the top, you see in the second telogen phase that the stem cells have returned to the hair germ at the bottom of the follicle. By the seventh telogen phase, the stem cells are scattered in the bulge area and are stuck there. None of them have gotten back to the hair germ, and so they are no longer capable of differentiating back into melanocytes. The graph at the bottom shows the stem cells are farther away from the hair germ by the seventh telogen phase, and they are more likely to be stuck in the bulge area by the seventh telogen phase compared with the second telogen phase. So what does all this mean? Well, 
It means that the reason we get gray hair is not because melanocyte stem cells lose the ability to convert into melanocytes as we age. If anything, this research shows that melanocyte stem cells are more flexible than any other stem cells. Unlike other stem cells, melanocyte stem cells can convert into melanocytes and can also convert from melanocytes back into stem cells again. The problem is that melanocytes have to move back and forth from the hair germ area to the bulge and outer root area in order to keep functioning. Unfortunately, this this melanocyte stem cell movement slows down with repeated hair cycles, which results in an accumulation of these stem cells in the bulge region where the wind pathway activation is too low to reactivate them. We need to make sure the stem cells return to the hair germ region in order to prevent hair graying. As one of the investigators says in the Popular Mechanics article, quote, it is the loss of chameleon-like function in melanocyte stem cells that may be responsible for graying and loss of hair color. These findings suggest that melanocyte stem cell motility and reversible differentiation are key to keeping hair healthy and colored." Unquote. So, this isn't a cure for gray hair, at least not yet. However, it is basic science like this that is important to work out the mechanisms of gray hair before we can find a cure. Now that we know the problem is just a problem with these cells moving around, it should be possible to see what genes are responsible for this mobility. Maybe it would be possible to upregulate these mobility genes, or maybe there is something in the hair follicle itself that is accumulating with age and slowing down these stem cells and keeping them from moving. Whatever the case, I am pleased to report that we now know what causes gray hair and we also know how to reverse it based on this science. At this point, it is really just a matter of which pharmaceutical company is willing to make the investment needed to properly develop and research a cure for the mass market. The good news is that it looks like this is already happening. The researchers who did the study are already looking at developing a cure. So I think we are very close, maybe even just a few years away from an absolute breakthrough in treating gray hair. What is good about this gray hair treatment is that it isn't like androgen alopecia where if you lose your hair you can't really get it back. With gray hair, it looks like it is theoretically reversible even if you have been gray for decades. After all, if we can get these stem cells unstuck, they should be able to produce melanin again in the very next hair cycle, which would mean that gray hair would disappear forever. It's just a simple matter of getting a physiological process that happens in our hair follicles to start working again. Nothing is actually destroyed when your hair goes gray. It's just the cells are inactive, but there's no reason they can't be reactivated again, and this research shows that it is very much possible. The old theory that you just run out of melanin is just flat out wrong, and this new research shows that hair graying is completely reversible. So we don't actually have any physical products surrounding this research that exists just yet, but we didn't have finasteride either back in the 1970s when Julian Imperator McGinley originally conducted her research linking 5AR deficiencies to an absence of androgenic alopecia. This is how treatments start, through basic scientific discoveries just like this one. So it stands to read reason that it is only a matter of time before gray hair becomes a historical footnote and the only people who will still have gray hair will be people who do so by choice. And who knows, maybe gray hair will even become fashionable again because of how rare it becomes due to it being so treatable. I mean, that's just me pondering, so I guess we'll see. Anyways, I'll see you all next time, hair loss witchers. God bless.